Hi, Dian. How are you doing? Hey, Petro. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You know, I was, I could not sleep last night. I was thinking about Open Beam. I realized that I don't know too much about Open Beam, you know. Can you help me with that? Can you uh, give me some instructions regarding this, some points? Okay, well, the first step is to not lose sleep over it because that's it's not worth it. <laughs> Open Beam is not worth losing sleep over. There are more important things in oh, life. Come on. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think. Open BIM is actually a fairly simple concept, uh, which has probably been overcomplicated sometimes. So it's basically BIM, but instead of BIM being locked in or tied into a, a vendor, a proprietary vendor, um, it is the practice of BIM in a way that uses things like uh, standards and international standards uh, in order to use many different technologies so that you're not tied into one vendor. And that's all Open BIM is. It's saying, why don't we do BIM in a way that we can collaborate with many different technical tools rather than have being stuck on one uh, piece of technology or one piece of software. So that's all Open BIM is. It's really not, not harder than that. Okay, that's interesting. So if I would like to learn more about this, if somebody is interested to read more about this, do you know or do you have any uh, trustable sources where can somebody read more about? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's pretty it's pretty light, but if you go to the uh, OSArch wiki which I have open here, you can visit it by going to wiki.osarch.org. Uh, they have a page saying um, learn about open bim and it's a fairly uh, a relaxed page right now, and it just copies a couple of principles that you can find on other websites like uh, Building Smart, for example. But really, there's a lot of content on this online, and and they all have are variations on the same theme. They don't differ too much, and they all say things like, uh, "We want to interoperate. Uh, it's, we want to use uh, standards that are uh, agnostic of a single vendor. We want to exchange data and collaborate." And uh, all, all of those, all of those concepts are are things you'll hear about Open Bib, and that's pretty much all it is. And um, truth be told, Open Bib should be what we should all be doing already. Um, it should be. I know we, we all aren't. Uh, not, not, all, not all of us are, but it's probably what we should be. Because, okay. Uh, yeah, because one of the purposes of BIM is to collaborate with other people, with other stakeholders. And the whole point of doing BIM in a large scale is so that your data can be used by other people and mm -hmm. can uh, be used for a very long time or extended across technologies. and. Uh, in order to do that, you should probably be doing Open BIM. If you're not doing that, then you're probably just doing closed BIM. You're not really doing BIM. You're just uh, you're collecting you're you're collecting building data and information in in your own way, which is which doesn't work well with anybody else. So it's probably we should say the normal situation should be Open BIM and um, people who, who, who don't follow these standards are not really doing BIM at all, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess it, it, it was quite challenging uh, with BIM that uh, not everybody understood uh, exactly. And um, now uh, we needed uh, to add open to really uh, point to what uh, do we want to uh, BIM to be. Uh, BIM as building information modeling and not just uh, project information model or be, uh, building information model. Um, is is the building smart who came up with this uh, concept? Um, good question. I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, I do know that uh, they use the term a lot, but I'm I'm not really sure if and even if they did. I guess. Uh, um, protect the term in some way. I'm not really sure if if that's something we should follow necessarily. Because um, 
the term open is something that existed long before open BIM and had connotations that existed way, way, way back uh, that, that, that many people forget about. So before open BIM, there was open GIS, for example. And that was all about the same similar principles. It was um, about the exchange of data in a non-proprietary way and uh, using interoperable standards. And that was invented before Building Smart uh, existed. And even before that, if you rewind again, it, there was the term open source in the, in the 1970s. And that also came from the term free software in the 1950s. So there's a, there's a big history and the English language evolves. And just because some company uh, 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 tends to protect the term, it's important to know that there is a, a rich history uh, behind it. So I guess something people don't, don't really, I guess, realize is that when software first started, and there's a good page on the wiki which, which will explain this. It's the software and it, it's the page on free software. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and it'll explain how when software development first started in the 1950s, it was considered normal for um, free software to, to be the common way that software was developed and distributed. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in around the, uh, after 20 years or so of this happening, it, the status quo changed and people started believing that proprietary software is the way things should be. And that led to these problems of interoperability and people being unable to exchange data and, and, and there was a lack of standards as well. And, um, and out of that, as, as, a, as a sort of reaction, the term free software uh, morphed and there was another term which was invented, which had similar connotations uh, with, with a twist that said open source. And, and this is kind of where the term open comes from. And then open was then appended to other terms like open GIS and now we have open BIM. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if, if you follow the history, it's, it's, there are many different connotations and a long, long history behind of it. And I guess we're coming full circle on that because um, the, the software development industry is going right back to free software. They, uh, right, right now, you can't develop software without free software. It's, it's very, very difficult. Uh, the CG industry is transitioning away from proprietary software back towards free software. And uh, in AEC, we're just at the beginning of making that, that uh, uh, or of realizing that this other world or this history uh, is, is another option. The potential, so, yeah. Yeah, so I guess Open BIM is, is part of that, of, of rediscovering the way things originally were, where software was designed to be interoperable. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, now I can say that uh, I understand the concept. Uh, thank you for a very nice explanation. Uh, is there anything more to it? Is there anything practical that we can implement or any implementation that we can practically use in our work that uh, takes it from a concept to something practical? Yes. And um, what turns it, into it from a series of concepts to something that will, will benefit you is by adopting certain uh, standardized agreements. So the whole point of BIM, of Open BIM, is to create data in a way that can interoperate and collaborate. And to achieve that, you need to follow standards. And there are different types of standards. Some are technical standards, like um, there are, are certain types of file formats you can use, or there are certain types of, um, the, the technical word is schema, but maybe a, a way of, of, of saying it simply would be an agreed way of describing things. You know, mm -hmm. Here is what we call a wall. Here is what we call a door. And and anytime somebody says, oh, what, what, do you, you know, what are the things we call walls and what are things we call doors, you can pick up a document. You say, read this document, and mm -hmm. it will tell you what are walls and what are doors. And as long as you follow that, your data becomes more and more organized. So mm -hmm. following these standards are, are what uh, allows you to follow the concept of open BIM. 
but it's not just formats and it's not just um, agreements of what things are called. There are also things like agreements of what relationships things have. And um, one of the big concepts of BIM is that uh, instead of, uh, is that things are called objects and objects have relations to other objects. So rather than a lot of geometry, you have a wall and a door and the door is inside that wall and this wall is inside the story of a building and mm -hmm. so on. So there are international agreements of what types of relationships can exist between objects. So you can say things like um, this door is in this wall and other people can say, oh yeah, I get that, you know. It, it seems so simple, but unfortunately, uh, computers, you need to explain all these really basic stuff to them to, to help them to understand. So that's why we need these, uh, these standards. Um, there are also workflow standards. So um, the process of creating data, the process of exchanging data, there are standards that um, describe what those are that we can follow. And if we follow them, it makes it easier to uh, shift resources so that one person can pick up where you left off or they know exactly um, quite confidently what data is going to be sent to them when they ask for something. And, and when you put all of these standards into practice, people work together a bit better. Mm -hmm.